first, they've lived their lives like they've played their music, hard and fast. But now ACDC is wrecked by scandal. Brady Halls has our exclusive report and joins me now, Brady. Thanks, Trace, and what a scandal. They are the biggest band on the planet and have just begun an eight-month world tour, coming here later in the year. But Australia's ACDC has been rocked by dramatic allegations involving death threats, drugs and arguments among its band members. Tonight, ACCA investigates ACCA DACA. I'm very disappointed here. His band has wiped it. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. I wrote him a letter and I tried to get in touch with Angus and, and, and I had no, no, no contact from anybody. From a long way to the top to rock bottom. I'm going to get away because I've got a criminal. The split within our most successful rock and roll band. I don't know who your friends are really. Yeah, so. Once the cockiest drummer in the world. I'm the best live rock drummer that's ever walked the planet. That's probably what I think of myself, can't I? I can't help it. That's, that's, that's who I am. Who he is today is a fraction of his former self. You right? You're travelling all right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You're going all right? Yeah, yeah. Now spending his time in a world of boys' toys, the spoils of success. <laughs> While his bandmates are off on a world tour, he's pottering around his luxury cruiser. Well, that's kind of an oil you've, you've been in oil spill this morning. It's coming on your boat, is it? Last night, yeah, I was pretty sure. What happened? Oh, the storm. Yeah. It's looking a bit worse for wear, but then lately, so too has Phil Rudd. He's spoken before about the band. It's a great band, they do this thing. But this is his first one-on-one -on -one since his arrest, with the prospect of going to jail hanging over his head on those charges of threatening to kill someone. You wish you were on the tour at the moment? Yeah, I do, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised you guys didn't come exactly. Yeah. Could you have made it? Oh, yeah. Because you, you, the bail conditions can allow you to go. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm getting ready to go. Yeah. ACDC's world tour, coming here later in the year, is now rudderless. Aside from the odd, bizarre court appearances, the 60-year-old has been holed up in his waterfront mansion in the North Island of the New Zealand city of Toronga, where he has lived for the past few decades. You have pleaded guilty to this, so, you, so you'll, how do you think you're going to go? Uh, well, we're having to have some discharge of that conviction, but I'm not sure that it worked or not, but uh, uh, the last one is and make your own mistakes. And, uh, and it was a mistake. Uh, that was a mistake, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a mistake, yeah. yeah. Rudd described it as a meltdown. A meltdown that today has left ACDC with just one original band member. Their four decades of success has been phenomenal. ACDC has sold more albums than Queen, U2 and the Rolling Stones. From their teens to their 50s and 60s, they've belted out a raw brand of rock and roll. Known down under as Akka Daka, they were the migrant kids from Sydney's West. With the exception, that is, of Rudd. The only Australian-born person left of the band. That's right. Yeah. Angus Young and older brother Malcolm started the group like most teenage bands, in the garage. We've always been a rock and roll band. Yeah. We, you know, like, that's always what we played. And yeah. um, that's what we always want to keep playing, is rock and roll. And so they did. <laughs> Highway to Hell was a tribute to the life of a touring rock and roll band. Back then, Rudd put it this way. If you'd have been on the road with us for those years up to that point, you would have known exactly what we were talking about. They packed stadiums on every continent. Success 
and the high times, but the high times seem to go on and on. We go back to the hotel and say, oh, Bon, you know, it's three in the morning, you know, we've got to crash, we've got to go, and I'm, yo, just one more drink. It took its toll. Bon Scott died in 1980. Most mortem will be carried out later today as a result of some heavy drinking. Brian Johnson successfully took his spot, and for the next 34 years, the band remained at the pinnacle of rock and roll. Then, a year ago, Akadaka told the world the devastating news. They had said you'd shrink it, jump it up the, up the brain. But founding member Malcolm was gravely ill with dementia and had to quit his beloved band. Then he'd been confused, you know, just travelling somewhere and stuff. <laughs> But they played on with a new guitarist and recently a new album. After recording the new album, Face of Issue in Vancouver, which was great, it was 10 days and was over there. I studied when I come home, they all thought I got a sack. Because what happened, like, it was done. 10 days and it was done. <laughs> and, um, so it was really, we had a great time out there. Yeah. And I um, couldn't really go relax and everything a lot. Back home, Rudd launched his own album. It was his first attempt at going it alone. He has even plastered the windows of his palatial home with the album cover. I imagine everyone in the world is going to buy a copy and I'll have another Bugatti. But he never got the Bugatti. The album wouldn't have got him a Suzuki Alto. You put a lot of effort into that album, we all know that. It's yeah. well, well documented and so didn't do so well. Is that the reason for it? You know, you just got cranky? Well, I was pretty stressed at the time and um, yeah. we got back here and... You know, the peanuts are working for me. You know, this, this launch party was a total disaster. Yeah. So um, I was really So peeved off, one of his former hits may have come to mind. It was indeed a dirty deed, but not dirt cheap. When Rudd's new solo album flopped, he flipped, ringing a friend and asking him to take out a former personal assistant who worked on the album. Rudd even rang the victim direct and threatened to kill him. The friend says Rudd offered him $200,000 plus one of his cars and a motorbike or a house, which he believed was payment for the deed. No stage, no soundtrack and no screaming fans. Barefoot and dishevelled in a New Zealand court, ACDC... Being charged with threatening to kill someone wasn't the end of his troubles. Problem number two for Rudd was what was inside his waterfront mansion. Arresting police finding crystal meth and cannabis, which may explain his behaviour at recent court appearances. Is he on my car? Do you have any message for your fans? No, I have not got What do you think of the original charges that were laid against you, Mr Rudd? Did I say bull on TV? The magistrate ordered him to stop taking illegal drugs. But it didn't end there. He then breached his bail conditions by coming into contact with a prosecution witness. The encounter ended in scuffles. Now he's being told not to enter two local streets where the witness lives and works. He was facing up to seven years in prison until he had a change of heart. He pleaded guilty and now hopes to avoid jail. Do you hope that once this is behind you, you might be able to rejoin the band at some stage? Uh, that's not for me, mate. That's not for me. I've yeah. got anger, so... That's, um... With Malcolm now out of action, 60-year-old schoolboy Angus calls the shots. As soon as I, I put on that suit and I put on any, and, I, and I just put that hat on, and then I, I, I just look in the mirror and I go, Jesus. So you think you might be able to, you know, continue on with the tour? Do you think for the Australian league and the New Zealand league? Oh, that's, uh, that's up to Angus, really. Yeah. Angus. Have they contacted you, mate? No, they haven't, no, they haven't called me. They haven't, yeah. I wrote them a letter and I tried to get in touch with Angus and, and, and 
I've had no, no, no contact from anybody, so... They, they, they haven't contacted you at all, no, though. Just, There's a lot of history. Are you disappointed? Oh, I'm very disappointed, yeah. 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 But, that, you know, it's, uh, it's life, man. In a statement, Angus said, Phil created his own situation. It's a hard thing to say about the guy. He's a great drummer and he's done a lot of stuff for us, but he seems to have let himself go. He's not the Phil we've known from the past. Having been at the top, Phil Rudd doesn't need to work ever again. You're not driving the Lamborghini today. <laughs> oh, you sold it? At least financially. You still fly a helicopter? Uh, yeah, well, from time to time, yeah. How many cars you got now? Uh, about eight of them. Is it right that in one year you bought nine million dollars worth of cars? Somebody. Can't help yourself. At his airport hangar is a massive car trailer that moves his fleet of sports cars from one racetrack to another. Inside is his helicopter, and then there's his waterfront restaurant, Phil's Place, lined with memorabilia, including his Grammy and Hall of Fame award. There'll be another tour, and I'll be on it. And, um, and if there's another one, I'll be on that. If there's another record, I'll be on that. It'll go until it dies. Yeah. And um, we'll, we'll probably all have to be dead before it stops, you know what I'm saying? Some, you know, you never stop Angus, mate. That was before, but now Angus has stopped him, leaving Phil Rudd to do some soul searching, making this heartfelt plea to our camera. Yeah, I'm sure they're having a great old time, you know? I'm sure they're really enjoying playing. I'm sure it really sounds great, so. You wish you were there? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm not the only one either, trust me. Yeah. There's others in the band that, that would like to see you, Jim. Oh, I don't know. We all know they'll make a difference. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just how it is. This isn't Rudd's first run in with his bandmates. He was fired once before in the early 80s, once again over drug and alcohol problems. By the time the tour comes down under in November, Rudd hopes to escape jail and resurrect his career. Yeah, I've seen the error of error in my ways, and um, yeah, it's a humble it, number from here. Yeah. His criminal fate should be known in late June at his court hearing. In the meantime, he tinkers with his toys in a life that's been tinkering on the edge.